For most of us, the Toronto Islands are a quick getaway without actually having to leave the city. But about 700 lucky residents get to call the islands home. So we found out what it's like to be an islander and what it takes to buy an island home. It is really small town living in the big city. Kristen Basmajan lives on Algonquin Island and says it's a special place with a tight-knit community. Um, it's such a great community because people all know each other and it's always a smile. If you get a chance to raise children on the island, you, you have really hit the jackpot. You know, whatever small inconveniences come with not being able to drive your car into a driveway, I think are more, more than made up for. Inconveniences like a lack of grocery stores, for example. While you don't necessarily need to own a boat to get to one on the mainland thanks to the public ferry, it does help to have a bike. I consider it my mule and I've got two big panniers on it and when I head into the city to do a shopping I always take a cart on the back. Um, I've, I can carry a lot on that bike. I, it's, it's my pride and joy to see how well I can pack my bike and how much I can fit on it. And if you forget something or run out... We have this e-group that you can like you know, I'm out of milk and you put it on the e-group and within an hour for sure, maybe within 30 seconds, you have your milk. It's very convenient. I mean, your closer neighbors will still say, just go in, it's on the first shelf on the left. Like Kristen, Alison Rogers has lived on the island for decades and is the chair of the Toronto Islands Residential Community Trust. That's the group in charge of home buying on the island, which is a complicated process. We have a purchasers list um, and it's 500 members long of uh, people who are waiting to buy a home on the island. The list opens in October on even-numbered years and applicant names are picked by lottery to be added to it. Once you're on it, you must renew your spot every year or you lose your place. You also can't leave your spot to next of kin. The wait can be around 30 years, maybe longer. Um, it depends on how many houses sell right. uh, in that time which and we only sell on average about two houses a year. If you manage to buy an island home, it must be your primary residence and it can be passed down only to children or spouses. But while you may own a home on the island, you can't own the land, which is leased from the province. There's sort of three components to the value of an island home. The replacement value, which is what the appraiser comes up with, the lease amount, and what's called an equity amount. The price is fixed based on those three components and a potential buyer must pay that price. No negotiation and no bidding wars. And that prevents islanders from making a profit off of public land, but it also provides you know, some affordable housing. As difficult as it may be to get to that point on the list, it is uh, you know, generally more affordable housing. If you'd like to add your name to the purchaser's list, it reopens in October 2024. For City News, I'm Dilshad Burman.